space, the final frontier. But in a world where nations are racing for dominance, it's not just about exploration. It's about power, resources, and control. If I were in charge of the United States and NASA, it wouldn't just be a space race. It would be a space conquest. So how would I do it? Let's find out. The modern space race isn't a friendly competition between scientists with telescopes. This is a new geopolitical arena. SpaceX, NASA, China, Russia, everyone wants a piece of the cosmos. The key, whoever dominates space dominates the future. It's about economics, military advantage, and the ultimate high ground. If you think space is just a place for scientists, you're thinking too small. Today, it's about survival and superiority. So if I were in charge of NASA, the mission would be be crystal clear. Conquer space before anyone else does. Part one is economic strategy. Space is the new frontier for resources, so let's start with those resources. The Earth's resources are finite, whether it's rare earth metals or even fossil fuels. The real wealth is up there, floating in the void. Asteroids are filled with precious metals like platinum, gold, and even more exotic materials. And on the moon, there's helium-3, which could power nuclear fusion reactors essentially forever, solving our energy crisis. If I were in charge of NASA, the mission wouldn't just be scientific exploration. It would be about securing those resources. Step one, I push NASA to lead space mining operations, partnering with private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin to mine asteroids and the moon. We'd be harvesting metals, minerals, and energy sources that could reshape the global economy as we know it and make the U.S. the undisputed leader of the new space economy. This isn't just about space exploration. It's about taking control of resources that will define the next century, and we can't afford to let China or Russia beat us to it. Part two is about military strategy. Space is more than just a playground for scientists. It's the ultimate high ground. And in warfare, whoever controls the high ground controls the battlefield. Satellites are the backbone of global communications, military operations, and surveillance. But what happens if those satellites are targeted or if enemy nations start developing space-based weapons? The answer is simple. We need to militarize space and fast. If I were running NASA, I'd push for space-based defense systems satellites equipped with weapons, orbital defense platforms, and even military space stations. The goal? Control the skies so no other nation can challenge us. And let's talk about the moon. It's not just a rock. It's a strategic asset. Establishing a permanent U.S. base there would give us the ultimate military advantage. We could house missile systems, surveillance operations, and even launch manned missions to control outer space, making sure that no one gets the upper hand on Earth. Part three is my colonization strategy. Of course, space isn't just for defense and resources. It's the future of human civilization. If Earth ever becomes uninhabitable, where do we go? Mars, the moon, beyond. That's where we go. NASA has been stuck in the same cycle, talking about exploration, but rarely committing to full-scale colonization. If I were in charge, that changes. Colonization becomes the number one goal. First, we build sustainable lunar bases and establish a permanent foothold on the moon. Next, Mars. We develop habitable space agriculture and systems that make life in space self-sustaining. Colonizing Mars isn't a pipe dream. It is survival insurance for humanity, and the U.S. needs to be the leader. I'd push for accelerated funding, cutting-edge technologies, and a bold plan to put American boots on Martian soil within this decade. This isn't just about space tourism. It's about making the United States the dominant force in the future of human habitation. Part four is the technological strategy. Now, none of this happens without innovation. If NASA wants to win, we need the best tech, faster ships, new propulsion systems, even space elevators to make interplanetary travel a reality. I'd prioritize massive R&D funding, not just for NASA, but for private companies too. We'd be working on next generation spacecraft that can travel further and faster. We'd be developing energy solutions like solar farms on the moon that beam energy directly back to Earth, or fusion reactors that make current energy sources look primitive. And what about AI? We push for AI-powered robots that can handle space missions more efficiently, reducing the risks to human life and speeding up exploration. The U.S. will lead the way in space innovation, and no one else will ever come close with this kind of a plan. 
Part five is a diplomatic strategy. Dominance in space isn't just about military might and technology, it's about diplomacy. Space is the new frontier, and just like that with any other frontier, there needs to be rules. The US should be the one setting those rules, not China or Russia. I'd lead NASA to form a global space coalition, working with allied nations to regulate space exploration, mining, and colonization. But here's the catch. While we lead the coalition, we ensure the U.S. remains the first among equals. We're setting the policies, controlling the resources, and making sure no one else gets a step ahead of us. It's about soft power. While we're building the future, we'll be making sure other nations are following our lead, or at least staying in line. In conclusion, conquering space isn't just about sending rockets into the sky. It is about establishing dominance over the future of humanity. Whether it's mining asteroids, building military outposts, or colonizing Mars, the race for space is a race for power. And whoever wins controls the destiny of Earth. If I were in charge of NASA, the mission would be simple. Secure the resources, control the high ground, and lead humanity into the stars. Because in the end, space isn't just a frontier to explore. It's a battleground, and if we want to win, we have to conquer it first. But let me know down in the comments what your strategy would be. I've been Drex Hawkins. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day, my friends.